Hello everyone. We are doing a July reading wrap up today. In July, I was able to read seven books, which feels good to me. Not my most, not my least. So, you know, I'll take it. It was a mixed, a mixed reading month. I read a few gems, absolute gems, and I read a few things that flopped. I think I need to listen more acutely to my preferences and be okay with admitting that even though if other people love a book, it might not be for me. I know what I like and I keep uh, denying that. I keep not listening to my book intuition. Let's get into it. We're in my bedroom today, by the way. So if light is weird, it's fine. It's fine. Want to start off the video with the absolute banger. The Undocumented Americans, incredible. <laughs> Creative nonfiction. This recounts Carla, who is a immigrant from Ecuador. Her experience moving through America as a journalist and her intimate connections to the undocumented community, which consist of her own family members, and then her subject matters, which she's interviewing for this book, which she becomes very close to. The prose in this is beautiful. The chapters are broken up by location. And the one that has stuck with me the most is probably the Ground Zero one and how incredible and resilient and selfless immigrant communities are and how culturally ingrained it is in pretty much everyone in the world except for Americans to act from a place of community and interdependence and seeing how that played out in many different people's lives was incredible the writing is phenomenal such a timely present ever ever present issue in america unfortunately and you have to read this you have to read it next up is james baldwin's giovanni's room this is set in 1950s paris and follows an american expatriate i really love this book james baldwin's prose is incredible cannot be matched and the exploration of identity and sexuality in a time that called for repression, oppression, and a lot of complexities about love was really moving to me. I, my only critique of this book was the kind of use of misogynistic language, but I actually think it was pointed and on purpose. I think it was used as a comparison in a smart and effective way to contrast um, our main character's relationship with Giovanni. I love this book. I think it was really intense emotionally and not one to take lightly or delve into lightly, but very worth it and I think very different from most of James. James Baldwin subject matter. Next up I have my book of the month pick, A Burning. I did not care for this book. I think the synopsis was misleading and it was much more of political fiction than I was anticipating. I thought it was going to be more character driven. It's set in contemporary India and you follow Jivan who is a Muslim girl who is arrested for suspected political connections after she makes a Facebook post, which sounds like an interesting premise. And you get to spend time with a few other side characters who are connected to her life in some way or another. I slogged through this, to be honest. Love the cover. <laughs> Thematically, it was interesting to read about class and corruption and justice in a setting that I'm not familiar with, but I feel like I feel like my takeaway was it could have been pushed more and all of the narrators seemed kind of distant from their own life. Like I, I feel like at the end of the day I didn't really get to know anyone and I was definitely interested in the trans non-binary queer representation of Lovely's community. I think I would have loved to spend more time with her just as her own character and could have read an entire book about 
her experience, but as a whole, the interconnectedness didn't really hit for me and the political tension was not thrilling for me. Next up we have The Pisces. I loved this book. A blend of realism and fantasy and existential despair and obsessive love and I loved it. It was a lonely, dramatic reading. It was also a weird, lusty, explicit romance novel at the same time. There's a lot of strange depictions of sex in this book, but I think some of them are good and some of them are successful and some are uncomfortable and hard to read, which makes sense for the situations that she's describing. I don't know, I liked I liked the the surrealness of the merman entrapment and kind of the questioning of one's own sanity when you're diving that deep into the void that is love. I liked this. I think this is like a good stake in the ground that if you like this book, we're probably gonna like similar books and we can trust each other's recommendations. So let me know if you liked the Pisces because I would love to watch your channel and see more about what you're reading and what you're up to. David Sedaris, Stress Your Family and Corduroy and Denim. I love David Sedaris. We've covered that already on this channel. He's a humorist, he's an essayist. He uses his own family and his own life to draw his writing from. And he is a frank, crude, judgmental son of a gun, but it's all from a place of observing and love, in my opinion. I think there's a lot of interesting tensions of like class in David Sedaris's book and kind of the uprising from lower to middle to upper class as he ages and uh, inherits his parents' success and then gets established as a writer. Um, I will always love him. Next up, Essays Against Everything, which I meandered my way through this month. I liked this book. I feel like it has aged already. This is a collection of critical essays and they're mostly cultural studies. So if you like reading The New Yorker, if you like reading The Times, if you like a bit of uh, detached conceptual cultural studies, you will like this book. Do I like reading all of them at once? Absolutely not. That's why I picked one up whenever I was in the mood to read something like that. I really liked the essay taking a closer look at reality TV in this book. I love reality TV. I think it is the weirdest cultural study we have in the world and it is the most fascinating. It is the most fascinating case study of human behavior and uh, kind of the spectacle to me. Shout out to Vanderpump Rules. Also rest in peace to Vanderpump Rules because y'all are racist. That collection in general was great and I also really liked the one about the fall of the hipster. Pick this up if that sounds interesting to you. It's a good one to leaf through. There's a lot of used copies at my bookstore at least so you could get it for cheap. Lastly we have Song of Achilles which I have kind of extensively talked about in a previous reading rush vlog. I'm not gonna belabor this too much but I did not love this book. I love Circe because it was about witches. <laughs> that was more fun to read about. This was about war, eternal fame, what it means to be recognized, and even though it's centered on a love story between two queer men, I still felt like it was pretty patriarchal and I didn't love that. And I didn't love spending a lot of time, Achilles in particular, he just felt so like detached and devoid of humanity in some parts. And I know it's because he was a god, but I don't know. Do I like historical fiction? I think not. I need to listen to my intuition. Also, Patroclus, we gotta get you some self-reliance. We gotta get you a meaning to live outside of your boyfriend because I don't like it. <laughs> that was it for the month of July. In retrospect, I read some really great books. It doesn't feel like that though. I don't know why I'm, I think I'm associating July reading with Song of Achilles and Pachinko, which I still haven't finished, which isn't fair to the rest of the books that I talked through that I loved. 
So I need to I need to work on that. Let me know what your favorite read of July was. I would say mine was The Undocumented Americans for sure. It's phenomenal, important reading. You need to read about it. And my worst, my worst was probably Song of Achilles. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but it was a waste of my time. I hope this was fun to watch. Just a quick snappy video for you. I will be back on Monday with a vlog, so I'll see you then.